Welcome to Cooking with Frankie Meatball. This week we got a special guest and we're gonna make some chicken parm. Hey, I'm Kevin. And I'm Johnny E from Philly Rock Radio. And you're about to get cooking with, with Frankie, Frankie Meatball. Meatball. I'm Frankie Meatball with the YouTube cooking show. I'm Frankie Meatball on the cooking chair with you. I'm Frankie Meatball every Wednesday in the show. I said it, you heard it. What's up guys? I'm here with Billy Whatever from Three Shades of Whatever. Check out his YouTube channel. Amazing stuff, let me tell you. Bill, thanks for coming over. Thanks for having me there. And cooking us your famous... I heard a lot about your uh, chicken, chicken pot. Pot. Yeah, you see, I got little bits of differences that I do that most people don't, you know what I mean? That's it. nothing crazy. You know, I make a basic... You know, uh, your, your garlic basil sauce. Okay. You know, I, I don't... So, use... like a quick one, two, three, whatever. Yeah, my Mild, idea... All day, gravy simmering. Exactly right. That, this my idea behind this chicken parm dish. It makes it something authentic tasting for somebody who you know, has to do it, like, when you get home from work, for dinner, all that kind of thing. If you want something that tastes like restaurant quality, but you want to make it at home in a minimal amount of time... This is your chicken parm. And it's got to be fresh. The fresher the better. You know what I'm saying? You know what he's saying. If you don't know what he's saying, you better listen and rewind it. Hear it again. The fresher the better. You know what I'm saying? Tell us a little bit about your uh, YouTube channel. Well, Three Shades of Whatever, I actually, it kind of started as a goof, to be honest. You know, uh, during the pandemic, I was watching reaction channels. Found myself up at night, like, scrolling. Like, I <laughs> just getting taught, like, one after the other. You know, you find a channel you like, you go through their catalog, and... I'm like, you know, some of the channels I found, I'm like, they're really good, but I have my own twist on things that I do. You know, I've been in entertainment my whole life. I've sang for bands. I, I did plays and such when I was young, but I've never been shy in front of a camera or a crowd. So I figured, what the hell, let me give it a try. Hey. People turned out to like me. Who the hell knew? <laughs> I get to say, I feel the same way. <laughs> right? I'm like, this guy, really? But no, this is a good time, and I, I have a lot of fun doing it. And, uh, you know, I and never... he's getting ready to start his own YouTube Cooking channel. Very true. Cooking whatever, coming very soon, so keep that in mind. Off the couch, not on the couch, off the couch. Oh no, that's going to be a different segment called Three Shades Off the Couch, which that is definitely coming soon, where we're going to be doing a little bit of things with uh, my man here. He's got a, a little surprise thing coming up here yeah, soon. And we're gonna off. Be, yeah, we're off. You guys know about it. We're raising money for uh, stand-up survivors, so come on out. Berlin Brewing Company in Berlin, New Jersey. 220 Whitehorse Pike. So let's get started. What do we got going on? What do you do first? Um, I always start off with the sauce because the sauce tastes the long is the longest part. You know, you gotta let that simmer for a good 25 minutes. So let's get on the sauce. You gotta chop up your basil, some garlic. What do you put in the sauce? I'm gonna tell you right now. As far as the basil goes, you never chop. Never chop. Never chop your basil. You tear the basil. Sure. You don't want to leave the flavor on the chopping board in the knife. Yeah. You want the you want the flavor in the sauce. So I tear it all by hand, toss it in. So look at that. Say a little I trick for you. No. A little trick for you. As uh, as far as the garlic goes, uh, I crush it. Crush it. That's it. Perfect. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna show you my knifing skills. Do you mind? Yeah, go ahead, dude. Go. So all I do is that's a giant clove of garlic. Let me tell you right now, that's a big one. That's your shisha. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Me neither. <laughs> you guys know how to peel garlic easy? Ha! Look at that. You take it, you peel it apart, it's all freaking done. Look how simple. Boom. Just like that. Bada bing! Ah! Look, he speaks Italian too. <laughs> Rabbit a boopy? Get calls, huh? See, now I'm one of those weird guys to where I like to take out the core. Pull that, yep. You know, I don't, I don't like having it in. It makes the garlic bitter, in my yep, opinion. It does. And uh, yeah, I don't like it. So usually, I when I when I go buy garlic, I'll fill the bottom, and if I feel something that's there, no good. Yeah, I'm not a pro like him. So if you see me messing up, <laughs> who cares? I'm not pro. I just do what I do. Okay, Mr. Red TV Show guy. <laughs> I'm Frankie Nepo with the YouTube cooking show. Okay, so we're good now. And one thing I have gotten actually good with since all the cooking I've been doing. Man. He doesn't need a razor blade to get it nice and thin. Nah, hey, this is no Paul Sorvino and Goodfellas. <laughs> Use the razor and used to slice it so thin that it used to liquefy in the pan with just a little oil. It's a very good system. I do my best. Now next. For his trick, he's gonna play the drums. <laughs> it's a little rough shot, right? About. That was a lot of work. Me. It won't look that long. I, <laughs> <laughs> I used to do it like that, and then Jeff, Jeff Irvine was like, what are you doing? He, he grabbed the thing and grabbed the knife. I don't like using a knife, but I used to, but just this washer's a better. 
Okay, crushed garlic. That's, That's why it. you gave it to me. Yeah. I didn't get that. And then you, take, <laughs> you know, you take that off and then you just have boop, boop, one, two, three, boom, you're done. Why'd you tell me before I started? I, you said you were gonna crush it, so I'm like, all right, he knows what's up. I did not know. I thought you were gonna be at the slice. I'm like, that ain't gonna work good. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got to show off my cutting skills, yeah, right? You got I'm to see impressed. my chopping skills? Not too bad. You don't see that kind of chopping on this show. <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't have fingers, but I need them because I play guitar, you know what I mean? Excellent! You ready for some sauce? Let's go make some sauce, brother. Let's get to the sauce. Okay, first you need a hot skillet, right? I prefer cast iron, but use whatever you want. Throw in a couple tablespoons of olive oil, you know, round about. Make sure the pan's hot though, right? Got to make sure it's nice and smoking hot. You see the smoke coming off it right now? You see that? That's smoke. That's what you want. Next, you take all the garlic, you toss it into the hot oil. Make, sh make sure you move it around so it doesn't burn. You Absolutely. Know? Nobody likes burnt garlic. Nah, burnt garlic has a bad taste. You, nice, you, you just want to get the aromas out of it, you know, you see? I like sweating some onions with my uh, garlic. When, when you saute onions and garlic together, uh, the water comes off the onion and it, it, it stops the garlic from burning. Next, you're going to add your puree, or as the Italians say, passata. I say tomato tomato. I say tomato potato. Nobody ever gets it. <laughs> Make sure to get all the sauce. Leave no sauce behind. hoo <laughs> Scrape the edges. It's important. You don't want that to burn. Absolutely not. Nobody likes burnt sauce. Next thing you want to make sure you do is season it well. You know, passata doesn't have salt in it at all, so you want to make sure to give it a nice amount of salt. You want to add some pepper in there too, or what? Just the salt? No, we're definitely going to go with some pepper. You, you need you need the good black pepper. Fresh ground, of course. Once you mix in all the salt and pepper well, you want to start tearing in your basil. Don't wait too long. We want to get this process going really fast. We want to get it covered and ready to go. One last step is mix in your basil. Make sure you mix it in thoroughly. You don't want to see any dry basil in there. I'll tell you what, from now on, when I do my gravy, I'm not chopping my basil. I'm going to do it like this. You'll definitely notice a difference. Give it a nice covering, you know, tin foil, basil on your finger, whatever you need, and let it simmer for about 25 minutes on a low heat. All right, now we got the sauce I got the knife. simmering. He's got the knife. We beat the eggs. We got the flour. We do. Some sort of flour. Before we start the panko, we're going to start the chicken. Always makes sense to get the chicken ready, especially whilst the sauce simmers. You got a, uh, you got a secret? Okay, my secret is really, all I do is I fillet it right first. That's the first thing I do. A beautiful sharp knife is the best. We're still gonna beat the meat. Oh, we're gonna beat it. We're gonna beat it. Beat it. So, now you take these little fatty bits and you give it the old, oh, slice off, right? That's good. I don't like wasting chicken, you know what I mean? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna beat the meat, you see? It's actually easy. These are going to be a little bigger, so I'm going to do one at a time. Now, what I like to do is just take a little piece of parchment and give it a good whacking. What am I beating this with? <laughs> your hand. You don't use your hand? At home? Yeah. I use a rolling pin, but... I did. I got no problem with it. Yeah, see, now that's flat. If you don't know what the point in this is, you ever notice at the end of your chicken, you get that little thin end that always gets real crispy and the rest of the chicken's juicy? Why is that, you ask? because we got uneven surfaces across the chicken. You want to get it nice and even and flat so when you cook it, it comes out even all the way across, you well, see? Makes it more soft. It does. You don't really need to do that with the underside because the it's underside is soft. soft. So I just like to give it a nice tapping because that bottom side will break apart every time. Hey, I like the way you beat your meat, pal. This is not that kind of show. <laughs> yeah, right? You see? That's how you do it. It's like magic. We got one more. Actually, this is pretty even all the way down except this end here. So all we're going to do is a light right bang on it. Right? A little light bang on this one, right? How about you? I bang pretty hard, my friend. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We, the meat is see, beaten. I, I, I'm not good with other people. Nah, nah, he's good. Don't <laughs> listen to that crap, he's doing fine. I can't control myself sometimes. <laughs> so, now, into the breading. I'll tell you what, let's move some stuff around. We'll play musical chicken. So what I like to do, is I make a mixture of panko. What do you like and, to do? I like to make a mixture over here. You wanna see the mix? I wanna see the mix. He wants to see the mix. First thing about the mix is, 
you need to get the panko crumbs, you see? Who cares about the name? It just says panko. We don't need brands, we need panko. Yeah. And I'm, I'm covering it. There it is, panko. <laughs> now let me ask you a question. What's up? Why panko and not regular breadcrumbs? Panko, they're, they're bigger. They have a, more of a crisp to them, you know what I mean? And I, for when you're putting all the sauce on, on, on top of the chicken and underneath the chicken, with regular breadcrumbs, I find that it gets real soggy and, and it loses that, that grit crunch. that you want, that crunch that you okay. want when you're biting the chicken. And the panko, it seems to lose that a lot less. I think it's because of the size of them, but even though like my daughter at home, she's like, why is the chicken sharp? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I put them in like the Cuisinart and grind them down a little bit, which is no different really, but they, they still come out a little crispier than that. I do, I do believe so. Some okay. about those Japanese breadcrumbs, man, they know what they're doing. But yes, let's get to it. We pop the top, right? Bang! Boom! We drop them in, see? That should do. Yeah, you got some parsley? We need the parsley. We need the parsley. parsley. That's very important. We need, oh, you got the fresh parsley. I like the fresh parsley, see? Now what I like to do is a little trick I learned online. YouTube channels. <laughs> I like to ball up a nice chunk of my herbs. And then you just take it, you just run your knife through it. Makes it a lot easier than trying to hold the stalk straight and get all that cut going because it never works, believe me. I made that mistake many a time. You wouldn't believe all the information you can get on YouTube. <laughs> How to do anything, like cook chicken parm, right? Or rip off the salt for <laughs> Boom. Look at that, you see? Now we got parsley. Parsley is essential to a good looking chicken. Because I honestly, I don't know how much flavor it really gives to it, but man, does it look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna take the hand. We eat with our eyes first. Always, always. After shallow frying the, the, the parsley, I don't know how much flavor really retains out of it yeah. but it's got a little zing right you gotta you gotta do something gotta here do something. Now, gonna... now here is the number one part to the breadcrumbs i don't season the breadcrumbs or the flour no need the seasoning in the sauce enough salt there you got enough salt in the cheeses that you're putting especially of this cheese if you don't know what this is you better learn today this is parmigiano or reggiano reggiano you know if you're buying parmesan from you know your local supermarket from it's a little jar. pub and it says parmesan across it you know what that is that's americanized crap this straight from italy hear how i said that i said italy okay you need italy. to learn that word italy straight from italy. italy you need the stuff that's real parmigiano reggiano it says on the packaging made in italy if you don't get that you're getting the wrong stuff you like pecorino romano love it so do i one of my favorites at home absolutely i use that a lot on my uh, on my chicken parm it's just you know, whatever cheese I got left at the house. You need a grater for that, my friend? I wouldn't mind one. You know, I mean, my teeth work okay, but they're mm, not quite sharp enough. Right? I don't think that's a uh, sanitize. That's not really. Well, who cares? Who's counting? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so for this, I like to use the smallest setting when it comes to the breadcrumbs because you want enough of the uh, the parmigiano reggiano to get through it. You know what I mean? You don't want little like chunks in there. You want to actually taste it. The saltiness. So how do you measure it? Like, what, what do you do? Is it personal preference? Yes, 100% I go by personal preference. What I do is not chunk it up like that. But I'm gonna, I'll show you what I mean. I, uh, I like to get a nice coating on top of the breadcrumbs, right? And what I just did was not nearly So it nearly looks like enough. snow. So it looks like snow. Very good call. Very good call, yes. You want that. You want to get all that excess off of there. You don't want to waste this stuff. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. And then you want to get a nice coating all over the top, right? Hey, look, it's snowing! Hey! Hey, let's go build a snowman. That's some, that's some salty snow, but it's good. I like it a lot. Oh, it's better than eating yellow snow. <laughs> don't eat the yellow snow cones. I, I agree with that. Don't, don't do that. See, I got a good amount in there right now, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna be enough. So what I do is I like to take it and mix it up. Little mix, little mix, Yeah, little, little mix, mix, little mix. So it gets thoroughly mixed yeah out. i want to be able to see that snow if you will through the panko if i don't see that snow in the panko mixed in i didn't do enough you want to be snow blind i love me some sabbath some sabbath okay so usually two times of getting a nice dusting of the snow you know like this isn't the kind of amount of snow that we call kids out of school these days just a late opening exactly that's all we need <laughs> Look at that. You smell that? Oh, 
God, it's amazing. I wish you guys could smell what we're smelling over here. Because that smells fantastic. Yeah, I use my jeans as a rag. I don't care. Okay. Now, we got chicken pounded out. We got sauce simmering. We got cheeses ready. Now it's the chicken. Where's the chicken? Okay, so first things first, we're going to take a piece of chicken, right? You got to have your chicken. You can't chicken. do this without the chicken. See, look, chicken. Chicken. Okay, you drop it into the bread crumb, uh, into the flour, right? Okay, you drop one. Drop it in there. We, we do teamwork, right? I like to do this. Get some on the edges. That way I'm not getting sticky chicken crap on my fingers, right? Boom. You know, wet spots. I don't want to see any wet spots. That's very bad when it comes to bread and chicken. You want it nice and covered. Now you bang off a little of the excess flour, right? You bang it off. Oh, oh, over here. And you're gonna keep it family friendly. Hey, know? I said bang off the flour. I didn't say nothing unfriendly over here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take this and we're gonna drop it in the egg. You gotta get a wash. I like to use the side of the bowl, right, to get a little of the excess egg off. And then I take it into the bowl. You see, you toss some crumbs on top, flip it over. Now look, cover them up real nice, right? Cover it up fully. What we're gonna do is we're gonna push like our life depends on it. We're gonna push. You want this to be nice and coated with the no crumbs. wet spots. No wet spots. That makes me unhappy. That's not good. Nah. And people always you say. You don't want to see him when he's not happy. He might turn into a monster or something. You know who knows? Look at this. He's on point. I already got a piece of chicken ready. I don't have to look for it. We got the nice coating of the egg. I got the best helper over here getting my chicken ready for me. This is the freaking way you do it. And call me the meatball for nothing. I like it. Well, maybe because I'm starting to look like one. Who knows? Partially. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but you see me getting bigger as the episodes get. Mm -hmm. It's all the stuff you're cooking there, Frankie. <laughs> you got to have other taste testers. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're gonna go take his chicken. We're gonna get all fried up. Now after you cook a few pieces of chicken, you record yourself cooking one final one for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> hey look, we were having too much fun. Yeah, huh? it happens, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, give it a nice little uh, oral bath, huh? I don't know, I've seen other chefs do it before, so I said, what the hell, it might, must do something. Right. About two minutes, maybe three on each uh. side. And then you flip it over, you got a nice golden brown piece yeah, of chicken. Yeah, look at that golden brown. It is amazing. I just want to take that off right now and take a bite. Oh. I wouldn't have a problem with it, so uh, don't don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little hot, a little bit. It's a nice looking piece of chicken. What do you say? Finger licking good, my friend. Make sure you shake off the excess oil before transporting. And when you get done, hit it with a little bit of salt on top. As you can see, oh that sauce! We got a beautiful sauce here, right? Not gravy. Nah. It's sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the fight. There's a big fight amongst Italians. You yeah. ever hear about that fight? Yeah. Whether is it it's gravy? Sauce or is it sauce? It's sauce. Know what I call? It? I'm done with the fight. I took gravy. I took sauce. I put them together. You come up with grisos. 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 I'm never gonna call it that. Nobody will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's got their preference. I th personally think that it's a it's a sauce. That's you know, gravy's gravy. Gravy's made from meat. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how I see it. Well, that's what a gravy is when you make your sauce with meat. It's a gravy. This don't have no meat in it. No, so it's not gravy. It's a sauce. That's why I said You understand? See, look, I'm learning here. Hey, some Italians might disagree you know, with what's, me. What's with, what's with the Italian fight over the pronunciations of mozzarella or mozzarella? Because <laughs> I, I watched a video of people from Italy saying that only American Italians say mozzarella. Over there, they say mozzarella. So what the hell? My friend, my, my friend, uh, Roro Antonucci, mm -hmm. she's a comedian. Okay. Her mother's right off the boat. And she did a little, she did a little video on her Instagram about how to pronounce mozzarella. And she says egg? it's not fresh mutz. It's not mutz, it's mozzarella. You know what I say? Depends what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I say? It's delicious. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna line a little bit of sauce Onto the sheet right here, and then you give it a little. Yeah. You give it a little. Uh, now why do a we got a this parchment all, paper? Parchment paper is because hey, it's easy cleaning up. So you see, we got a little sauce down. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a slice of our chicken. We're gonna lay it right on that little the little bed of sauce, right? Then we're gonna do it again. That little big boy. Nah, right yeah, now? we're gonna do the small guy. The big boy, he's gonna go right here by himself, see? Because he's he needs room. He needs room to breathe. I I, I can see the weight on him from here. Jojo, would you stop breathing on yes, me? Yeah, yeah. Put him in the. 
bathroom. Oh, we put him in the bathroom. Oh, Sonny, any mush is in there, he ain't gonna fit. We got mushed. <laughs> see, look at that, that's a perfect so bed of sauce. You don't wanna put that on it, let's see. You know, let's, put the meatball. Let's down. taste the chicken. See what my chicken tastes like, what do you think? What do you think, huh? Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> mm. If that ain't a cutlet, I don't want to, oh yeah, it's a night heart. Mmm. Mmm. That's good sauce right there. Huh? Let's see here. So, you gotta get the sauce all over the top again. You know, this main thing is to keep the flavor of the sauce mixed in with the meat. Because after this, we're gonna give it a cheese bath. Cheese bath. Can't go wrong with cheese. No, He's sorry. got a special cheese. Dude, I even knew it existed. Yeah, no. I'm gonna teach you guys all something today. I found by accident, as a matter of fact. And I have never gone back since trying it. Believe that. They say, uh, not not that. <laughs> so here we go. My secret ingredient. This stuff is called scamorzarella. Okay, scamorzarella is a cheese that's between mozzarella and provolone. It's right in the middle. What's it called again? Scamorzarella. You know what that reminds me of? What's that remind you of? A girl you don't like. Ah, she's a scamorzarella. She might be cheesy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> See, and they come out a little thick. And since we got bigger slices of chicken, what I, do, I, I like to mold it out a little bit. Instead of, you know, you know. Well, that, it's stretchy. Great. Yeah, it's stretchy. You put it over here a little bit. Get yourself, you flatten them out a little bit. Yeah, you taste that. You tell me what you think. It's freaking delicious. I like it. Right? It's different. It's got the hint of provolone with the texture. Smooth? Yeah. With provolone. It's not too salty for the mutts. Yeah, I said it, the mods. I'm not. Now what I also like to do, is since we have a cheese that's between mozzarella and provolone, I like to add a shredded mixture. That's smart. On top smart. of mozzarella and provolone. See, I just did it, mozzarella, I, I did it. See, we both said it. Yeah, whatever. I said one, he said the other, but guess what? We're still talking about the same thing. Exactly. Yep, we're gonna use the big one this time, okay? We're gonna get. I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> Pause. That was possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was waiting. I was waiting to see if anybody got it. There's a cooking channel, people. I, I can't do it with you. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you watch the rest. Watch this. You wanna see something cool? Now, while he finishes cleaning up over here, we're gonna get this in the broiler. Get a nice little brown to the cheese. A little bubbly. You know what I mean? Then we're done. Oh, I let's, can't wait, man. Let's go. Yo, let's get this in the oven. Let's go. Yo, man, you guys take a look at this. You see? Nice little chard. That's not burnt. It's called chard. You need it. No color, no flavor. Exactly. What's Chef Ann say? Ground food tastes good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I stole that from Gordon Ramsay. No color, no flavor. <laughs> nice. The beautiful thing about a good piece of chicken when it's tenderized and cut and everything, he don't need a knife. Look at this. Right through it like it's nothing. Still here to crunch. Oh, my God. Does that look good or what? Well, that's why I used the panko. Oh, yeah. We got good eats here. Let's see. Give it, give it the meatball test. Oh, you hear that crunch? I heard it. It's like Captain Crunch. Cheers. I salute. Oh, man. Oh, man. Mmm. Hold up. Double dip. Oh. The I'm sauce. in love. The sauce. The cheese. The crunchiness of the panko, the tenderness of the chicken. I don't care what anybody says, there's no better chicken parm around. That's Bro, delicious. Well executed, well done, brother. Thank you, my brother. Guys, follow this recipe, I'm telling you. It See? won't disappoint. And it's super easy. And it's super easy. So good. Yeah. The mix of, oh. of that scamor, what is it, scamorzadella? Scamorzarella. Scamorzarella, it, it just, it, it does something there, guys. I'm telling you. Forget about it. Mm. 
So with that being said, if you like what you saw, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Turn on that bell notification button to get notified every time I put out a new video. Guys, check me out on Facebook. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. Check out my guys, phillyrockradio.com. They play everything from the forefathers to the band. <laughs> I gotta go, he's gotta go, his wife's gonna kill him, but he's gotta finish eating before we go, oh, yeah. so guess what man, let's tell him, wanna tell him? Let's tell him. Until next time. Forget about it, eh?